Sex is the life force energy that runs through us all. Can you use sexual energy for your spiritual evolution or perhaps for emotional healing? Is it even possible? Clinical sexologist Dr. Martha Tara Lee will explore all these and more on Eros Evolution on Home Times Radio. Hello, hello, and welcome to Eros Evolution. This is where sexuality and spirituality meet. My name is Martha. I'm a clinical sexologist based in Singapore. I have a doctorate in human sexuality and a subjugate in counseling, coaching, sex therapy. I'm doing my fourth degree, which is a master's in counseling, which I'm in my last module of. And uh, it has been um, pretty all right. It, it has been pretty all right, actually. Um, uh, I wish it would slow down a little bit more because I'm really enjoying it. Uh, but, you know, there's always time, money, and all that. Anyway, you can find me at eroscoaching.com. That's my website, and I am a sex coach and relationship coach. So today I have a guest, and I'm talking about a topic that is really interesting for me. Uh, Lucy was recommended to me by Sarah Martin, who was our guest uh, last week. And uh, today's topic is avoiding predators in Tantra, how to stay safe while expanding consciousness. So Tantra and conscious sexuality can be in, in, uh, insanely transform, transformational uh, and can also be incredibly risky if you don't have your eyes open. So while there are many gifted teachers, there are also many predators. So Lucy Rowitt uh, shares her best advice for avoiding the common pitfalls while starting your tantric journey while sharing her experience of reading the the Love Tantra uh, Tarot. While sharing her experience of reading the Love Tarot. So we'll find out more about it later. So today she'll be sharing with us her practical advice for staying safe and keeping a critical mind when going to a workshop. So more about Lucy uh, Lucy Rowett, she's a eclectic soul. She believes uh, in uh, passionately living a life that makes you juicy. She's a sex positive coach, writer, and tarot reader, working specifically with women. She sells pleasure products to women who want to feel pleasure in their bodies finally. And she believes sex, spirit, and transformation are the keys to be your most shiny self and uh, this is exactly what this show is interested in and her sex positive dream would be a world where radical acceptance of all orientations desires and gender identities would be universal she also dreams of seeing women being sexually empowered to claim their bodies she loves writing latin dancing learning new languages and finding herself in new airports she specializes in social media for sexuality professionals to get their message out into the world. So when not dancing or traveling, she's really found caught up with a good cup of tea and a good book. And you can find her at juiceandjasmine.com. And on Facebook, Juice and Jasmine, Twitter, Juice and Jasmine, Instagram, Juice and Jasmine. So welcome to the show, Lucy. Hello. Hello, Lucy. Oh. Okay. That's very strange. Uh, we hope she'll come back. Hang on. So this is live and this happens. So... While we're waiting for Lucy to come back, if she comes back, because uh, sometimes there are problems with uh, connections, uh, let me talk about um, uh, Tantra. So Tantra is uh, very popular with anybody who is interested in the spiritual side of sex. Although you can be engaged with the spiritual side of sex without needing to learn Tantra. So spirituality and Tantra, Tantra is just part of spirituality. And so lots of people, when they want to learn Tantra, they attend a workshop. And 
uh, in these workshops, uh, you will have men and women, and you will have people of different um, orientations, age groups, and also at just different stages of their lives. You have people who are really young in their 20s, wanting to learn all about love and life and uh, lust and sex. And then you have uh, people who are um, married, who are um, there as a couple, uh, sometimes as an individual. You have people who are divorced, and you have also much older people who have uh, have gone through or are going through their midlife crisis and uh, seeking themselves and um, being uh, uh, seeking to evolve, or maybe this delusional um, about uh, life and about work. So this does happen. And so um, we, you, you meet all kinds of people there, really. And just because um, they're interested in Tantra, it doesn't mean that they are good people. And there are people who are, uh, there are people who are just looking for a hookup. So welcome, Lucy. Hi, Martha. I'm really sorry. I think I'm having internet funkiness yes, where so I am right now. I was just... Yeah. Uh, so we're glad you're here. I was just introducing the show, introducing yourself and tell, and describing to listeners that uh, in Tantra we meet all kinds of people. So uh, perhaps you want to start by uh, sharing with us like, what are some of the people that uh, you have experienced attending Tantra workshops? All right. So um, I've been to many different Tantra workshops and different Tantra retreats and I, I kind of feel a bit nervous around putting the title for this uh, talk because I don't want to talk badly about all the Tantra. I think it's a really beautiful practice. I've met some amazing people through there. But yes, there, people come to Tantra from all different backgrounds. You have people from different ages coming through. Um, it's just, uh, so the people I've met, um, hmm, let me think. I, there, are a lot, there are a lot of men that go to Tantra, and I find that some of the men that go to Tantra do tend to go for the wrong reasons, and at the same time, there are a lot of people that go to Tantra who have a history of abuse, especially trauma or sexual abuse, and this isn't everyone, but at the same time, I feel that it can attract people who are very, very wounded, just like any kind of spirituality, which makes it really ripe for people to exploit their power, if that makes sense? Yes. Yes, makes sense. Go on. Well, um, you know, I, maybe I'm partly speaking from my own personal experience and the experience of many other friends I know have done Tantra. And one thing I found very interesting is you talk to any woman uh, about their experience of Tantra, and most of them will say, yes, it's brilliant, apart from there's always a few creeps there. I think every woman I've spoken to has had a horror story of some person coming on to them in a way that wasn't consensual, that felt quite icky, that felt um, like they were having intentions and weren't pure. Um, I've had personal experience of this, and my friends have experienced this as well, and it's something that the more people I talk to about Tantra and sacred sexuality, I feel frustrated and I feel sad because it's a beautiful practice so I've healed a lot through it I've grown a lot through it and I feel really sad that there's this shadow aspect that there are many teachers and people that go that um, they're not dealing with their own wounding and they're projecting it onto other people in the in the workshops if that makes sense yes so yes it's important to highlight sometimes even the teachers are the ones who are the predators yeah I found that it's something that I feel uncomfortable talking about because I know some amazing teachers and I also know some teachers who I have very bad reputations. I, I'm not going to name names because I don't think that's appropriate for here. But I do get a lot of people sending me messages saying, oh my God, I want to try Tantra. Who can you recommend? Where should I start? And I feel very uncomfortable because there are some teachers I do trust and I do recommend and there are other teachers and at the moment, I'm not sure. Um, I remember I had a conversation with a good friend of mine a few years ago when I was still quite green and quite naive about the scene, and he reeled off 
a list of teachers he knew that I knew that were hitting on their students that had very bad rumors about them. And I was shocked because I tended to look up to these teachers as people I respected and I admired and I wanted to train with. Um, and I felt, I felt really sad. Uh, have you had this experience, Martha? Yes. I I find that um um it is true I I I I will have to say that um the women who have been wounded tend to be the women who um get attacked <laughs> I mm. don't know whether they come across as vulnerable or like they don't have strong boundaries uh but yes so they would attract that energy. And when I mm. attend Tantra workshops, I'm very clear. I'm not there to fuck. I'm not there to hook up. <laughs> and I don't want to. And I would say no. And I'm there to learn. Mm. And then I sleep after the workshop. I don't, I don't <laughs> fuck around. And, and I'm also, I'm very mindful of my reputation as a sexologist. You know, I don't want to mm. get a bad reputation because... Um, it's different for me being Asian and being Singaporean as opposed to my colleagues uh, who are uh, Australians or Americans or whatever um, because their culture is more open. And I'm mm -hmm. so mindful of my reputation. Um, back when I come back home, I don't ever want to have anyone say anything bad about me. And so mm -hmm. um, I go to workshops being extremely clear about my boundaries. And uh, mm -hmm. so... Even if I get approached, which I don't, uh, usually I think, I can, uh, yeah, um, um, I would say no. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I, I agree. It's... Yeah, so this is a big conversation and um, yeah, we'll have is. a break now and we'll come back and discuss more about this. Cool. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hi. I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance. Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Every two minutes, an American is sexually assaulted. The majority of victims know their attacker. It could be your friend, your neighbor, or someone you met at a party. If you said no, it's rape, and it's a crime. This is Christina Ricci with RAIN. Call the National Sexual Assault Hotline today at 1-800-656-HOPE or visit RAIN.org. That's R-A-I-N-N dot O-R-G. Brought to you by RAIN and this station. Hello, hello, and welcome to Eros Evolution. This is where we talk about all things relating to sex and spirit. And uh, you're listening to the show on the Own Times Radio Network. And you can share the show with your friends by going to the link, ontimes.com forward slash mobile. With this link, you can listen to the show without needing to download any app. So today we are talking about avoiding predators in Tantra, how to stay safe while expanding consciousness. And I'm with Lou... I'm with Lucy Rowitt, and uh, she is based in UK, and uh, she's a sex coach like me, and uh, her website is uh, juiceandjasmine.com. I don't know whether I said juicy just now. It's juiceandjasmine.com. <laughs> and um, 
So I want to I want to say that uh, we started the show by talking about how there are predators in Tantra. When you attend a Tantra workshop or Tantra retreat, uh, there are people who, in the name of uh, uh, sacred spirituality, being really like nice and sweet, are actually predators. And uh, so unfortunately, it tends to be men towards women. And um, so it's also unfortunate that some of these predators are actually the teachers themselves. So uh, today we want to unpack like how we can stay safe while uh, still um, uh, learning through these uh, workshops and retreats. So uh, Lucy, would you like to uh, share uh, more about your personal experiences uh, relating to attending such uh, events? Yeah, thanks, Martha. Um, I found it interesting that you said that it's mostly men towards women because this was something I was very reluctant to say because I don't want to enforce gender norms. But unfortunately, yes, in Tantra retreats and workshops, it is 99% of the time it's men doing predatory, predatory behavior towards women. And I'm really sorry for that. Uh, that kind of noise, that's my mother's computer. Um, one thing I found uh, in my own personal experience, I'm thinking of the first ever retreat workshop I attended. It was a five-day intensive. Um, it was my first ever jump into this world, and I started to do five days intensively in another country. And it was very powerful, but one thing I found about the teacher straight away is that he was sleeping with people on the retreat, and I became very good friends with one of the one of his lovers. And I found that she became very damaged afterwards, she became very hurt afterwards, and then I was invited to future retreats, and that retreat in itself burned me out. And I've, I've been to many other workshops where there have been men there where they say, oh, I want to share the energy with you. I don't know if you've had that experience, Martha, but you know, women I've talked yeah. to who've had men come on to them wanting to experience energy with them. So they invite them to their place afterwards, or they have teachers inviting them to their place afterwards. And if there's one thing I've learned in my sex coaching training, it's the absolute importance of having boundaries. As a teacher, as a facilitator, your boundaries need to be absolutely firm. And I know a lot of these teachers who do sleep with their students, they're saying, oh, I'm just following the energy or I feel they need it. No, that's bullshit. No, you're just following your own ego and your own desires. Because many of the women that they're sleeping with are very vulnerable or very damaged. And I found it interesting that you said that um, the teachers seem to, seem to find the vulnerable women because it's something energetically they give out. Um, maybe I speak from my own personal experience and that I was perhaps more vulnerable a few years ago. And while I didn't have teachers hitting on me, thank God, because I don't know what I would have done, I did have other participants who were very forward in their wanting to experience things with me. And I was quite naive. And again, I think many women who do go to these retreats and workshops can be very naive. Um, I think the crux is, is that they teach, you know, the whole point is to push your boundaries and to push past your resistance. But then at, one po at what point does it become your resistance? And at what point does it become, no, this is not healthy, you need to stop? Um, am I making sense here? Because I, this is such a big topic and there's so much to talk about and something I feel quite affected by having experienced this, this world and feeling quite disappointed with some of the very shady characters I've encountered in it. Yes. So this is a very unfortunate topic to be talking about. I think it's important to talk about the shadow side of Tantra. Just like anywhere, really, we can't blame Tantra. Um, just like in the real world, people who don't have uh, strong boundaries uh, do uh, um, get attacked by predators. And it's important to know that Tantra is just a microcosm of what is actually happening in the outside world. And it's a, mm -hmm. it's like a, it's like a, it's like a small little world that actually comes together for that time. And during that time, also uh, people are away from their natural environments. They're away from home, mm -hmm. and so they feel freer to be themselves or freer to be not themselves. And mm -hmm. so sometimes we project things onto people like, oh, this person is so spiritual, or this person is so sensitive, <laughs> this person is so nice. This person is so genuine. Like we project stuff onto people that may not be mm -hmm. true, um, and and mm -hmm. so it's it's very true what you're saying that it's important to have strong boundaries, and it's also true that even when we 
um, have negative experiences, to not be so hard on ourselves and to say, oh, I made a mistake and to uh, fall into mm. shame and judgment because this is how we learn as well. Mm, absolutely. It's, um, I don't regret any of my own experiences through Tantra. I don't, mm. I don't regret any of my experiences that I've had through Tantra because they made me grow. But at the same time, I have more resilience than somebody else. I worry that somebody with a history of sexual abuse, especially sexual abuse and trauma, that it would send them back to therapy. Um, I heard a story from one of the retreats where a participant told me that the leader pushed them so far that a man, uh, he had his boundaries completely violated and he had to go to therapy afterwards. Um, and he had, to, he had to go back to therapy for a long time. I'm thinking of one particular tantra organization that I'm not going to name, where their practices are so unhealthy and so dangerous, especially for people who are mentally fragile. And it worries me that they want you to push past your resistance, but at what point this is mentally unhealthy for you? Because um, as you said, in these settings, they open you up so wide. You're energetically open up very, very wide. You're going to be doing things that you're not normally doing or that are out of character. But sometimes you can do things that are so out of character that when you come back down to earth again, you feel, what just happened? What on earth did I do? Who am I? And it could be and it can be very traumatizing for some people. And this is what I worry about some teachers, that they are so, I, I, maybe I'm being naive and thinking, I think most teachers do have good intentions and do teach a lot of wisdom. But at the same time, I worry that a lot of these teachers, they're getting so wrapped up in the energy and their ego of having all these beautiful women adoring them, that they let their shadow side take over. Um, one thing I found in Tantra is that it does attract a lot of very beautiful women. And uh, not that all women are not beautiful, but a lot of women who um, they're dressed very seductively and I'm thinking what elderly male tantra teacher isn't going to be tempted by all these luscious women throwing themselves at him. Um, I remember there was a tantra festival I've been to twice in London where I am very skeptical of it now because all of the women attendants uh, or the women helpers are dressed in very sexy clothes and they're there and they all happen to have the perfect figure proportions and I wonder how much of this is tantra and how much of this is borderline exploitation? Hello? Hello? Oh yes, please go ahead. I, I was afraid you cut off. No, sorry. Um, we're having an internet uh, problem here in East Sussex at the moment. Somebody uh, pressed the cable, uh, somebody's cut the cable, so everyone's struggling with intermittent internet. Where was I before I got cut off? Yes, yeah, about the the uh, w uh, women dressed up in seductive ways and yeah. how tempting it is also for them. I know, and I when I say this now, I sound like I'm slut shaming or saying women shouldn't be dressing the way they should. Absolutely not. A woman should dress however she wants to dress. But one thing that worries me is that they were deliberately kitted out in very seductive clothes and it was all women attendants. And I worried and I was thinking, is this really Tantra or is this some heterosexual man's fantasy that he's cloaking in a guise of spirituality? And I felt a little bit sickened by it, but I didn't feel this was very genuine. And this is the same organization that claims it only does heterosexual Tantra which I feel is very discriminatory, which I feel is not inclusive, which I feel is really outdated. So there's, there's a lot of stuff that I see in Tantra that I feel is very predatory or very heterocentric and very sexist. Mm, yes, I get it. I really get it. So it is true. <laughs> it is mm -hmm. true. Uh, there's this saying um, amongst us teachers because uh, I am a I'm a teacher and then I'm with like other teachers and uh, you know because I guess because I'm a, sometimes a teacher and also a participant and uh, I get access to all this gossip and mm -hmm. so I hear what is happening in the world of um, um, teaching uh, of sex workshops and sex retreats and one of the things that I hear is um, how all these men uh, can't control their dicks basically <laughs> and unfortunate, yeah. it's unfortunate not everyone is like that not everyone should be like that we shouldn't 
um, be uh, having this hate of men, but it's just um, it's just whenever um, um, there are men involved, uh, it is important to be more cautionary because uh, mm. you don't know who they are. They may have a reputation of uh, being a good teacher, but it doesn't necessarily mean that um, in their personal capacity they are not human. And mm. um, so it is uh, important to be clear, like why you are there for the workshop, what you want to get out of it, uh, whether you're looking for your next boyfriend or you are just looking for a hookup, and that's fine too. But be really, really clear about um, what you're looking for. Mm. And I think one interesting thing about tantra is, or any kind of conscious sexuality workshop, is you can fall in love very easily and very quickly because of the exercises you're doing. They evoke a lot of strong memories. So sometimes you will want to continue the energy of the workshop with someone. But at the same time, um, what you were saying about men not being able to control their dicks, I found that... Um, yeah, a lot of these male teachers and male participants, they tend to hop from workshop to workshop, picking up a woman at every workshop. And one thing that makes me very angry is that they're guising this under, oh, it's spirituality, oh, it's spirit. And what they're doing is leaving, leaving a trail of very broken, upset women behind them. And they're not taking any personal responsibility for their actions, for how they've treated these women, because they say, oh, well, we're all, we're all consenting adults. And this is something that I think really blurs the lines with consent and something that, again, makes me very angry about Tantra. Um, you know, it's actually quite interesting that one of the only Tantra organizations I trust they work mostly only with women. So when I went to one of their retreats, it was women only, and I felt a lot safer than going to a mixed retreat. I haven't been to their mixed retreats. Um, and uh, funnily enough, all the teachers are women as well. Mm. Okay, so uh, we have a break, and we'll come back and talk more with Lucy Rowitz. And remember to check out her website, juiceandjasmine.com. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hi, this is Julie Geigel. And I'm Susan Schuler. And I'm Lori Walker. And we are the Psychic Angel Channelers from Angel Talk Tuesday. Tune in every week at 10 a.m. Eastern on OMTimesRadio.com. The angels have heard your call and are here to help. Are you ready to receive? Bathe in the beautiful vibrational frequency to help you heal, expand, and remember your magnificence with Angel Talk Tuesday. What's up? This is Brad and Mike from Lincoln Park for Life Beat, the music industry fights AIDS. Listen up, times are tough and you get a lot of things thrown your way. If you're being pressured to have sex and you're not ready, then say no. If you're having sex, be smart and use protection. Respect yourself and protect yourself. For more information, call the National AIDS Hotline at 1-800-342-AIDS or log on to www.lifebeat.org. Welcome back to Arrow's Evolution, where sex and spirit meets, and today we're talking about avoiding predators in Tantra, and just before break, we were talking about um, how it is important to have strong boundaries, and um, how people who have um, had sexual trauma in their lives um, might have uh, weaker boundaries. Like for instance, if you've, you've um, you, you don't know what is normal, you don't know what is strong, then how are you going to be able to... Um, keep that strong uh, when there is no norm. norm. <laughs> and I'm not sure whether I'm making sense. But anyway, um, 
So it's really important to uh, have strong boundaries, to be wary. And uh, what are the, some of the other things that uh, you think, Lucy, um, it's important to uh, watch out for uh, in workshops? Um, so I, ha I wrote a list of things that I think are very important to watch out for. And I think number one is asking for recommendations and asking for recommendations for more than three people. Um, and potentially, uh, possibly a recommendation from someone who hasn't slept with the teacher. <laughs> I think that's a really good recommendation. Um, number two, I would, um, whenever they are describing the workshop to you, when they're generally most tantra workshops, there'll be the invitation for nudity. If you can ask the teacher, if the teacher can't be clear with you about exactly what's going to happen or what will be expected of you in the workshop, I would be very wary. I understand that they want to protect you know, their intellectual property and they want to keep an element of surprise. But if they won't tell you how much nudity will be involved or how much sexuality will be involved, uh, just, just enter with caution. Um, another tip that I found is, as what you were saying, Martha, before you go, you need to be very clear about what you want to get out of this and how far you will go. So the idea is that you can go down, but you can't go up. So if you can check in with yourself as to how far you want to go before you're in an aroused or highly energized state and making sure you continually check in with that and you don't go over that. Um, another thing I would always watch out for is if they're not very hot on consent and boundaries in the workshop. So a lot of Tantra teachers will pay lip service to consent. But if they're not listening to you saying, no, I don't want to do this, and they're labeling this as resistance, you need to get the hell out of there. I've seen this happen before where people were genuinely finding this very difficult and the teacher was pushing them and pushing them and they got burned afterwards. The good teachers I've known have absolutely respected when somebody said a hard no and they've never pushed them into any, doing anything more. Um, another uh, Kind of tech, another more logical thing is if the teacher isn't asking about any medical conditions or mental health conditions before the workshop, be wary again because if the teacher isn't really working with any mental health or physical health conditions, that means they don't really have enough experience or training or don't really care about what you have or what you have physically or mentally. Um, especially in regards to your mental health. If your teacher doesn't really care or isn't asking about your mental health, they probably don't know how they probably don't know how to contain you in terms of if you're going to have a breakdown. Certainly, um, I know of other people and women who've had these experiences in workshops. Um, another thing to be aware of is, and maybe uh, the most cliche thing to be aware of is if a man or anybody approaches you and says. Can we just share the energy together? Let's meet up afterwards. I think that's a stop response for stay the hell away and get the hell out of there. Because generally those people that want to share energy with you, they are energetic leeches who just want to suck your sexual energy away. Um, and also be aware of anybody who sends you a private message asking for a private Tantra session or to do Tantra massage. If this is someone you've never met before or you hardly know. Again, be very careful and stay the hell away. Um, and I think maybe it comes down to trusting your gut and how you're feeling around each teacher and workshop. So because these workshops can be very highly energizing and they can take you into states of ecstasy or pits of despair, I would always take time to check in with yourself, even if the teacher is trying to discourage that. No, take some alone time, even if it's just a few minutes, to ground and check in with yourself as to how you're feeling. If the teacher doesn't want you, won't let you check in with yourself, then I think that is quite dodgy and that's quite um, off-putting. I know that in Tantra workshops, they want you to stay within the circle and stay within the group, but if they won't give you at least five minutes to check in with yourself, then I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think that's particularly healthy because then you're much more likely to do things that you're going to regret later or that could potentially be very harmful to you, uh, to your physical health or your mental health. Um, I'm trying to think of other recommendations. I wrote a whole list down and I was thinking of asking my tribe on social media because I'm speaking from my own experience and from people I know's experience, but I'm, I'm kind of curious as to what other people's experiences would be or if there's any even better tips than I can think of. 
Um, I think a uh, basic tip is, again, is if you know that this teacher is engaging with sexual contact with participants on the workshop, stay the hell away and get the hell out of there because this teacher has very weak boundaries and is pushing those weak boundaries onto other people. Um, be aware that if they're inviting you to an after party afterwards, be very wary because those after parties tend to turn into a free for all, which if you want to go to a free for all and you want to experience it, that's fine. You know, sometimes they can be very empowering, but check in with yourself if you want this and if you're willing for this to happen. Because these free for alls, I mean, I don't want to say orgy because it's not necessarily an orgy, but they can quickly get out of hand and people's boundaries can be violated very quickly and very easily. Is there anything else you could add, Martha? No, this is all really, really good. It's really good what you are all sharing. I really like it. I um I wrote it down. <laughs> um yes. So you said uh, look for recommendations from more find, than three people. Yes, from more than three people. Um, people who haven't slept with the teacher. You talked about. Uh, so this is a genuine recommendation of it being good, like quality training. So that's really important. Then the next mm. one being um, being very um, uh, aware of the nudity. Like what's the point of it? Is there a learning point or is it just mm. like uh, kind of like a free for all? And the third one being being very clear what you want, how far you will go uh, mm. in terms of um, before being be, before even going to the workshop and before getting um, aroused. Because when we're aroused, you know, things go out the window. Um, yeah, uh, being, exactly. Being, yes, being wary of uh, teachers who are not um, uh, hot, as you mentioned, not hot on boundaries, on consent, mm. and uh, disguising and calling it as uh, resistance. Mm. Uh, but that's, that's, just, that's just all these woo-woo uh, terms, <laughs> your terms to actually um, get what they want. So another yeah. one that you mentioned is um, 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 people who say let's share energy and all that. Mm. So I actually have a personal story that I like to uh, share because mm -hmm. uh, when you brought that up. So last uh, last year in December, I went to this uh, Tanja retreat um, in India. And um, there was one particular um, classmate of mine, uh, Indian guy, who who wanted to like get to know me more and I said fine we can uh we can talk um um during breaks and stuff and then he wanted to cuddle with me uh during mm. the break which is fine and then he wanted to go further and then I said no and then um he was going he was leaving the retreat uh because he had work or whatever and uh I said no I said no and then he followed me to my room. Like, I went to my room, and then oh, he gosh. found out which room I was staying in, came to my room, and, of course, I had housemates, which was great, because mm -hmm. I was shocked. Like, I said no, like, at mm -hmm. least like, more than a dozen times. Don't come near me. Not interested. Not interested. And actually followed me to my room, and um, I was still expecting me to change my mind. And I was like, this is so annoying like mm. the first no should have been enough i know i've had i haven't had this experience personally but i've seen it on a retreat where one person a man he really had the hots for this one woman and throughout the whole retreat he was pestering her and pestering her and pestering her and she she didn't seem to be getting upset that she was like being jokey about it but he was not taking no for an answer and she was saying, I have a partner at home. I'm in love with my partner. I'm here for myself. And he he was not, it wasn't aggressive, but he just kept pestering her. And it was like, do you not understand? She said, no, are you not taking no for an answer? And of course, he continued to come on to every other woman in this retreat as well. Again, this is not respecting anyone's boundaries. And I think one thing about Tantra is that it's a great vehicle for you to release any sexual shame and to embrace your sexuality and embrace your desires, absolutely. But you have to learn the opposite or the, the flip side of embracing your desire, which is also understanding consent and understanding just because you're horny and you finally unleash your sexual energy and you want to go and fuck or whatever you want to do, that people still have the right to say no, and they still have the right to refuse you. And this is, I think, a double-edged sword within conscious sexuality and Tantra. 
Um, and I, I can think of other examples as well of other women I've spoken to who, no, 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 what I was thinking of when you were talking is the amount of messages I've received from men who want to uh, receive a Tantra massage from me and then sending suggestive messages. And these are men I've luckily never met in person. But I'm thinking if I ever met them in person or if I wasn't wise enough to not be able to meet them in person, I would be in a very vulnerable situation. And I can't imagine what it was like for you being in a very intensive retreat where you can't really escape. You know, you can't really run away or walk away from this person because you're in the same building. And this is what makes Tantra very ripe for abuse, especially for women who don't feel able to say no. You know, I think it's a thing for a lot of women where that we're conditioned not to say no. And then, so if you're wanting to be a good sport, you want to and you want to dive into this and experience as much as you can from a retreat, but then you feel like you can't say no. You know, I'm just thinking of a very close friend of mine whose whole experience of Tantra has been completely ruined by some really dodgy characters in it. And, you know, she's completely distanced herself from it now and she's had enough of it. She thinks it's all bullshit. And to be fair, a lot of Tantra teachers and participants do spout a hell of a lot of New Age bullshit cloak disguised, uh, well, they're disguising their intentions or their ego as, oh, non-attachment, oh, um, I just want to experience the energy with you, oh, that's resistance, oh, it's all about oneness and unity. Yeah, that's good enough, but just because you want to use that to fuck me or to do anything else, that's not okay. It's not okay. Um, and this is a, a something I see that really puts me off the kind of spiritual community and has made me quite wary to go into Tantra workshops now. Yes, it is unfortunate, um, and so that's why I that's why I think it's not a bad idea to actually go to a retreat where you are um, there with only women, and mm -hmm. where you it's it's really clear that it is um, purely for learning and um, go deeper within yourself. So we yeah. have a break, and uh, we'll come back for the last segment. the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Join me, Tammy Adams, intuitive life coach and spiritual healer, for my new show, Karma Talk. Learn how to get rid of your karma so that you can start living the life you are meant to live. I am not going to tell you what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. Join me on Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Time for Karma Talk on Calm Time Radio. It's on us to stop sexual assault. To get in the way before it happens. To get a friend home safe. And to not blame the victim. It's on us. To look out for each other. To, to not, not look, look the, the other way. way. It's on us to stand up. To step in. To take responsibility. It's on us. All of us to stop sexual assault. assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. And welcome back to Arrows Evolution. This is the last 15 minutes of today's show, and I want to talk about uh, Volva Massage. So uh, uh, today we talked about uh, going to uh, Tantra uh, uh, workshops and retreats and then you meet with predators and uh, Lucy uh, Rowett uh, actually gave us many, many good tips about what you can do to uh, take care of yourself when you go to such workshops. 
uh, one of the things that I want to mention very quickly, because we are in the last 15 minutes of today's show, is that uh, there is a lot of uh, fascination uh, about uh, uh, getting a yoni massage. So yoni is Sanskrit for vulva, uh, our female genitals. So uh, this is fascination with getting yoni massage. And um, there are people who are just wanting to have it because everybody else seems to be having it. And it's more like, a, you know, like a monkey see, monkey do. Uh, <laughs> you're, curious. you're curious, you want to try it, and you believe that there are benefits. But what happens when you uh, just go for the sake of going without actually looking for rec recommendations is you may end up becoming uh, traumatized. You might feel that instead of um, receiving uh, the the healing or the massage that you want, that you're actually feeling as they are taking things from you. Mm. And this is when uh, women uh, say they feel violated, feel raped, feel traumatized. Uh, so anything you'd like to comment on that, Lucy? Um, I could comment a lot about that because I've experienced vulva massage in workshops and I've been very lucky in that I never had that experience. But I know of a few practitioners who are practicing vulva massage and I do not think they are practicing for the right reasons. I wonder if this is kind of a guise of, you know, misogyny, mis uh, disguise as, oh, I want women to experience their sexuality. Um, there is one particular organization that I will not name that has a terrible reputation in the guise of vulva massage of actually exploiting the women that go to them. Um, vulva massage can be very, very healing, but at the same time, if you're getting anybody to touch your vulva who you don't know, you have to be so careful. Personally, I don't want a man touching my vulva unless it's my partner because I can't guarantee that this man is not there with hidden intentions. Um, I know of other, and um, I think we were talking before about the concept of de-armoring, and de-armoring seems to be a buzzword within the Tantra conscious sexuality community, and actually I'm very, very skeptical about the process of de-armoring because a lot of the practitioners who do de-armoring, it's like they're hooked on massaging women's vulvas. You know, they want to constantly massage women's vulvas, and I'm thinking, what are you getting out of this? Why are you obsessed with wanting to massage a woman's vulva? Um, am I making any sense here? Because I've yes. seen a lot of this, and I, I want to call bullshit on it. It, it. Vulva massage can be so deeply healing, but you have to be so careful who you choose, because as you said, they more, more, they'll more likely end up taking from you. And it's almost like, you know, if you have a tantra massage workshop where there is vulva massage or penis massage, um, that people can go thinking, oh, great, I can touch someone's genitals legitimately and I can get off on it, but it's all okay because it's spiritual. Um, no, just no. Um, one thing I found interesting about the concept of de-armoring is I understand that, yes, we probably do store trauma and tension within our vaginas and within our vulvas, but then it makes you so scared to then engage in any kind of penetration after that in case you accidentally end up re-traumatizing your vulva. No, just know that, that it, I, I call bullshit on that as well. Um, I can, I mean, on the flip side, I know that other people who swear by vulva massage, I know of a few female tantra practitioners who love giving vulva massage. I know many sexological body workers who have the highest integrity and I fully support their work, but that's only because they have the highest integrity. There are other sexological body workers slash tantra teachers slash somatic sex coaches who do not have integrity and do not have ethics and they're uh, you know, using their desire to be sexual with lots of women as, oh, I'm a healer, I want to heal you. No. No. Yeah. No. So it's okay. really, really important, just like what we mentioned earlier in today's show, to be really clear about who is the client, whether mm. you are receiving what you want and mm. whether you feel that the person is making you pressurized. So I mm. attended, um, I had a, a, a yoni massage uh, previously and um, the the practitioner was apologizing like a million times uh, that I didn't orgasm and I say you're not getting it I didn't want to orgasm and mm. the fact that you are apologizing <laughs> that I didn't come uh, it's like it's now not about me it's about you it's about you being good and you performing and it's all about you and your ego and yeah, not about add, me 
Can I add something here? Because that seems yeah. to be a really common thread within conscious sexuality and that the male practitioners want to provoke an orgasm within a woman. I'm sorry, but that's hidden misogyny right there. Yeah. It's so, not up to you to make a woman yeah. orgasm. And so, why do you so, want this goal? Precisely. And, and, and it's almost like that, you know, it's the same as sex, you know, like orgasm is the ultimate, it's the end all be all. Orgasm is mm -hmm. the goal. And therefore, uh, if I like it, then therefore women will like it. And uh, uh, that's the whole point of doing it. And it's, it's not true. They, they just don't get it. And mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, sometimes um, uh, easier to not go to uh, a male practitioner actually to go to uh, somebody that you feel comfortable with who is a female. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And um, uh, I have, you know, I have, yeah, I have yeah. two friends. I have two friends who practice a form of vulva massage and they clearly state that they are independent of any organization and they deliberately only, they're two women and they practice women on woman vulva massage because they're so fed up with the organization that they come from that is very much no it has to be man or woman because they believe in the healing power of vulva massage and absolutely but they they don't want anything to do with that organization they believe it's more healing when a woman does it for another woman and they're fed up with this you know misogyny disguise this spirituality which comes from so many organizations Oh, so there's so much to unpack here. <laughs> so let's talk about uh, something else here, Lucy. Uh, so I'm with Lucy, uh, and she's with uh, JuiceAndJasmine.com, and you can find her on uh, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter as well. So uh, let's let's talk uh, briefly about what you see is the link between sex and spirit. Now that's really interesting because. Um, one of the reasons I called my website Juice and Jasmine was the idea of living juicy. And I love this idea of the link between sex and spirit. It's this gorgeous, juicy feeling, this blissful feeling. And this is something that I kind of incorporate, this feeling of bliss. And you can experience that through spirituality and through sexuality. It's a feeling within your body. Um, for me, linking sex and spirit is if I do a meditation, if, I do, if I'm doing yoga, to constantly be linking this with my vulva and with my sexual energy and it for me it's also combining my sexual energy with my spiritual energy you know combining my root chakra and my sacral chakra with the rest of my chakras as well and it all being integrated and healthy i could talk about it for ages because for me um, i think for me just to sum it up is living juicy living juicy in every way possible in a way that feels delicious and that includes juicy self-pleasure it includes embracing pleasure in all forms it's um embracing the wonderful gifts that life has to offer you um i there are very basic um, meditations and exercises i do that i can't even remember where i land them where i'm just sitting there with my hand over my vulva and over my heart and breathing and connecting the energy when i'm doing kegels and i'm breathing into it and pulling the energy up um one thing I find interesting is, you know, the reason I got into sacred sexuality is coming from a background of religion. I was brought up very religious. I embraced the evangelical movement when I was a teenager. And religion is very sex negative. And so to finally understand that sex and spirit are so inextricably linked and they can be joyously paired together is something that I, it's a mantra I live my life by now. And I also have an ebook that I give away for free on my website. It's called Get Sexy, A Juicy Girl's Guide to Reclaiming Your Natural Sensuality. I wrote this a year and a half ago and people still really enjoy it. It's my little top tips and my little manifesto for women because this is a book written for women. And I would also say anybody who identifies as female, so I don't want to exclude people who are trans or non-binary. But it's a way of really living in your juiciness, living in your sexual energy, living in a way that feels delicious. And this kind of spills out into your body in a way that everything feels sensual and beautiful. So you can get that for free on my website. Uh, if you go to my website, juiceandjasmine.com, and you enter your email address, you get that for free. Mm. Okay, good. So your ebook is called uh, Get Juicy, it uh, Get Sexy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, get Sexy. Uh, get Sexy, a Juicy Girl's Guide to Reclaiming Your Sensuality. Yeah. Great. I'm I'm gonna get it. Okay. Cool. So um, uh, let's talk very briefly about your favorite uh spiritual uh practice. Um, it's very simple. It's dancing. Um, it's I put on some of my favorite Latin music or my favorite reggaeton music, 
and I close the curtains, I shut the door, and I really get into my body, and I let my body move however I want it to move. I do hip circles. For me, it's a spiritual practice, but it's also a very grounding practice, and I don't see them as any different from each other. If I want to do any kind of spiritual work, if I want to read the tarot, if I want to do a reading for someone, I have to get into my body, and I do this by dancing. Um, another very simple spiritual practice I do is I love sitting on the beach and feeling my vulva touching the stones and imagining roots coming out of my vulva down into the stones and into the earth and then connecting that to the sky energy. And maybe I should write another ebook on this. <laughs> yes, that's, that's a beautiful practice to connect with earth and with sky. Mm. And it's so simple and it's something... But I can't even remember where I learned this, or maybe it's kind of a fusion of different workshops and trainings I've done. But it's so simple, and it's, it's really effective, it's really grounding, it's really yummy. It's a really yummy feeling, and it's knowing that spirituality doesn't just have to be about aesthetics, about transcending, about being up in the sky. It can be about feeling pleasure in the body and being right down here on Earth. Mm, beautiful. So we just maybe have like 30 seconds left. So you do a love tarot. Uh, tell us uh, briefly about it. Oh, you can't. Uh, so we are ending. Yeah, so maybe for the next show. Uh, so uh, next week I have a different guest, uh, a couple actually, and we're going to be talking about uh, living a sex positive life. That's the name of the mm-hmm. podcast as well. So Angelica and uh, uh, John uh, Luna will be uh, on. So uh, stay tuned to Arrows Evolution next week. And in the meantime, have a great week ahead. And uh, be careful of predators. <laughs> <laughs> so we love you, okay? And we highlight the shadow side of sex, but we don't want you to be scared. So uh, goodbye and have a great week. Bye.